Thank you. Hello. Hello. Put your phones away. I'm not a Pokemon. I can feel the tension, though, so I'm a little freaked out. You're like, oh, my God, look, she's ginger. <laughs> I am different, though. I am. Let's deal with the obvious. I'm different. I'm Canadian. I don't have chlamydia. <laughs> I'm also what you guys call mixed race. Yeah, it's true. I'm a white girl. I'm a black girl. It's <laughs> nice <laughs> 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 having a voluptuous booty nowadays. And, you know, a lot of women are getting uh, butt implants. I don't need to do that kind of shit. It's fabulous. It does have its drawbacks, though, because... Uh, yeah, you know, my underpants keep getting caught up my ass. That's the problem. And some woman suggested that I try tights. In North America, we call them pantyhose. Very weird. You guys call them tights. And I've never bought tights before, so I went to the store and I asked the sales lady what kind of tights are best for the sort of situation. And she looked at me and she looked a little concerned and she said, you know, well, don't worry, one size fits all. <laughs> my job I get to travel all around the world doing comedy it's been a great couple of years got to do a tour in Japan that was exciting I'm huge in Japan <laughs> Australia last year, and if you haven't been to Australia, I highly recommend it. People will warn you if you're headed to Australia, be careful. There's a lot of big poisonous spiders, and there are. Just a little pissed off that nobody warned me about the reptiles, because there I was, I had my backpack on, I'm trudging through the rainforest, and a goanna ran across my path. If you don't know what a goanna is, it's a big fucking lizard. <laughs> Not shit, you. These things grow up to six feet long. They have razor sharp teeth and claws, and they prey on birds, snakes, and small mammals. <laughs> and a Jurassic Park moment. I was like, holy shit, thank God I've got arms like a T Rex. <laughs> Shit's going down! <laughs> and it was a big one, too. It was a six-footer. And goannas are very aggressive. So I was coming down the path. It turned, started coming at me, started charging me, freaking me out. It's like, oh, my God, he's going to try and rape me. <laughs> it's all right. It turns out he had a reptile dysfunction. <laughs> This is such a fun job, you know? And as a little person, I do try to make my act relatable to people, you know, and let people realize we're not all that different despite the whole height thing. And one of the situations that I encountered, it actually happened 10 years ago, and I actually had to start talking about it on stage. And I was working in a comedy club in the northwest part of America. And I was in the back of the room. My support act was on stage. And my opening act is there, and I'm having a bite to eat, like a BLT and a Diet Coke. And I'm a couple of mouthfuls into my sandwich. And my stomach starts making a lot of noise. A lot of rumble from 
down under. And I know from previous experience, I don't have a lot of time. <laughs> I'm like, oh my God, where are the toilets? And they're like, you gotta go through the door and through the foyer, so I'm just fucking booking. <laughs> And the owner's girlfriend, she's in the foyer, and she's like, hey, Tanya Lee, I want to introduce you to my parents. I'm like, not now! <laughs> so I get into the toilets. There's three stalls, and they're all taken, right? So now I'm crouched down on the ground. I'm labor breathing. I've got that face. You know that? <laughs> the woman in the, middle, in the middle stall comes out, kind of a heavy set woman with a red sequin top. She sees me crouched down on the ground. I'm like, hey! <laughs> so she, she comes out, I go into the stall, I close the door, and I close the door, and I pull down my trousers, and I'm doing a bit of a dance, right? I'm doing a bit of a dance, because I have a dilemma. My dilemma is, how do I get on the toilet seat? Because <laughs> obviously I have a system, right? Normally what I would normally do is put one ass cheek on side of the toilet, right? And I would sort of throw myself up onto it. Well, that's not going to work when you're clenching your butt chops as tightly as possible. So I'm like saying, they go, okay, think tan, think tan. What am I going to do? And you don't think very clearly, right? Because I'm under a lot of pressure. Inside and out, you don't think clearly when you're under a lot of pressure. So I'm like, okay, what are my options here? I'm like, oh, oh, I know what I'll do. I'll go head first. I'll go head first, and then I can flip myself around, right? So of course I have to wait. I have to wait for the cramp to pass. I have to wait for the cramp to pass. And then I'm like, okay, so I go head first, I get my knee up onto the seat, I thrust myself forward, and that's when my ass exploded. I shot out like a party pooper in New Year's, just I hit the door on the sides of the stall and it just started dripping. Of course, everything was in slow motion to me, I was like, it wasn't until I heard the screams of the two women on either side of me, just like, ah! As they went running out of the toilets, that I jolted into reality, and I was like, oh my god, no! So my first instinct, grab a bunch of loo roll, right? And I start wiping down the stall, and I'm wiping down the doors and everything, and then it occurred to me, oh my god, now I'm in here by myself, right? Nobody can come in here. What if somebody comes in? Nobody can see this shit! Right? So I go running to the door of the toilets and I'm holding it close going, oh my God, what am I going to do? I need some help. And I thought, oh, the owner's girlfriend. Maybe she's still out in the foyer, right? So I open the door. I'm like, hey, Christine, I need a mop. So Christine comes to the door. Of course, I have to explain to her, ooh, I had a bit of an accident, right? And so she opens the door. She looks around and she's like, and then she fucks off. do this on my own, right? <laughs> so I'm thinking, oh God, oh God, I'm having a panic in that. It seemed like an eternity. It was probably only a couple of minutes. It seems like forever. There was a knock on the door. Some woman, I don't even recognize, pops her head in the door. She's like, hi, I'm Christine's mom, Gail. I understand you need some help. I'm like, oh, this is just fucking great. <laughs> I'm butt naked from the waist down. There's shit everywhere. <laughs> Hey, this is quite the first impression, huh? Oh, nice to meet you. <laughs> so Gail comes in. Uh, a female bartender comes in. She's got a mop. She starts going to town. Gail now has my black trousers that were on the ground. She's now got them up by the sink trying to scrape the shit splatter off them. <laughs> I'm still trying to write down the stall and the door and everything. I can't get the smell of shit out of my nose. <laughs> Christine comes back in. She's like, hey, just so you know, uh, your opening act is finished, but don't worry. The owner is on stage killing time until you're ready. I'm like, oh my God, I still got to go on stage. I totally forgot about that part. I got to get my shit together. <laughs> right, because I'm the headliner. People actually came to see me. There is no plan B, right? I got to get it together and get the smell of shit out of my nose. So Gail gives me back my black trousers. Now they're black trousers with little bits of toilet paper and napkin and shit splatter on them. 
So I walk back to the comedy club, and I'm like, Woo! I can do this. I'm a professional. I can do this. I can do this. Woo! So uh, I walk into the club. Somebody gives the owner the old thumbs up. She's ready to go sign. So I get my introduction. I go running up on stage. I get up onto my box. I turn to the audience. And right in the front row was the woman with the red sequin top and her two friends. We just locked eyes. And I was like, hey! I mean, of all the comedy clubs in all the world, these bitches are sitting right up in the front. Oh, my God. Okay, so first. This has happened over 10 years ago, over 10 years ago, and I've only just been able to talk about it. Yeah, I think I suffer from, like, post-traumatic shit disorder. <laughs> but it is quite therapeutic. That's what comedy is. It's a very therapeutic thing, you know, you're getting it out, <laughs> literally. You know, plus, obviously, like, I couldn't, oh, for months, I was, I was losing sleep. I was just reliving it over in my head, and then it came around Christmas time, and my best mate, we were sitting around at Christmas just getting pissed up, you know, and we are with family and friends, and Pam was like, hey, tell me about the time you shit yourself. <laughs> you asshole. Plus, I feel like I need to get it out there, right? Because I'm in show business. When, you know, you know, I'm hoping to be big and famous one day. Well, famous. <laughs> so I feel like I need to get the story out first. Because right now I can picture these three women sitting around a campfire with their grandkids talking about the day they saw a midget explode. <laughs> Oh, by the way, I finished the show and then I got the hell out of there. Yeah, I had to do an entire hour on stage, an entire hour of all like happy, happy, joy, joy, like nothing was wrong, right? I couldn't get the smell of shit out of my nose. I was stressed out big time. So the minute I was done, I got out of that comedy club, got back to my hotel room, I closed the door, start crying, you know, start taking my clothes off because I'm going to have a shower, you know. And I had my hair piled up on the top of my head. It was in a ponytail. So I go to take my hair out of my ponytail and realize the entire top of my head was caked in shit. Because apparently when I was wiping down the stall, I forgot about my midget arms. That's right, I was a total shithead. <laughs> well, thank you guys very much for coming out and supporting on Monday nights. Uh, I've been Tanya Lee Davis. Enjoy your evening. Thanks a lot.